Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. Breaking into the tomb of the tragic Tudor boy king. One of the most tragic Tudor monarchs was Edward VI. He was just a young boy when he came onto the throne, and his reign was marked by economic problems and social unrest. But he was the son of the notorious and brutal Henry VIII, and it was hoped that Edward would carry the Tudor dynasty forward and that his descendants would rule over England for centuries to come. This did not happen, as at the age of 15, inside of Greenwich Palace, Edward VI died after suffering from a serious bout of illness. Following his death, further turmoil would occur as the nine-day queen, Lady Jane Grey, came onto the throne, but then she was ousted by Mary I, who went on to be known as Bloody Mary I. But Edward VI's reign was one which was short-lived in the years following his father, and it was dominated by Edward Seymour, the Duke of Somerset, and uncle of the king, who would later be executed for treason. But after his death, Edward was interred inside of Westminster Abbey, in a huge ceremony. However, his tomb would be broken into centuries later, and his coffin would be disturbed. During January of 1553, Edward VI became ill with a fever and cough which got worse. An ambassador reported, He suffers a great deal when the fever is upon him, especially from a difficulty in drawing his breath, which is due to the compression of the organs on the right side. But he would live a number of months more, and many believed in May that he had recovered, but in June his health went very downhill again, and he was said to have been suffering with coughing, up a greenish, yellow and black, sometimes pink, mucus from his lungs. The doctors believed he was suffering from a tumour, and they believed that he was terminal and that he would die from this. The imperial ambassador described his condition in late May of 1553 and said, The King of England is wasting away daily, and there is no sign or likelihood of any improvement. Some are of opinion that he may last two months more, but he cannot possibly live beyond that time. He cannot rest except by means of medicines and external applications, and his body has begun to swell, especially his head and feet. His hair is to be shaved off and plasters are going to be put on his head. The illness is judged to be the same as that which killed the late Earl of Richmond. Those around him knew the situation was grave, and they drew up plans for the succession that shockingly named Lady Jane Grey, his cousin, as heir to the throne. In early June, Edward did receive a number of visitors, and he continued his education, but then, on the 11th of June, he was hit by a bout of very severe fever. It was reported, Since the 11th, he has been unable to keep anything in his stomach, so he lives entirely on restoratives and obtains hardly any response. His legs are swelling, and he has to lie flat on his back, whereas he was up a good deal of the time, before the violent attack on the 11th. They say it is hardly to be believed how much the king has changed since the 11th. Eight days later it was written, The king of England has sunk so rapidly since my last letter on the 15th, and the physicians no longer dare to answer for it that he will last one day more. His state is such that the king himself has given up hope, and says he feels so weak that he can resist no longer, and that he is done for. The King, Edward VI, would make his final public appearance on the 1st of July, where he appeared in the window of Greenwich Palace, and his gaunt and thin condition shocked the onlookers, but within a week he would be dead. Edward died at 8pm on the 6th of July 1553 at Greenwich Palace, and it was reported that his last words were, I am faint, Lord have mercy upon me, and take my spirit. What is shocking is that the Tudor king, that great hopes were painted for, lived just 15 years, and there have been many theories that he suffered from the same illness that his uncle, Arthur Tudor, would succumb to at a young age, or that he suffered from tuberculosis. On the 8th of August 1553, Edward VI was buried inside of Henry VII's Lady Chapel in Westminster Abbey. The funeral was described as the 8th day of August was buried the noble king Edward VI, the seventh year of his reign, and at his burying was the greatest moan made for him of his death 
as ever was heard or seen, both of all sorts of people weeping and lamenting, and first of all went to great company of children in their surplices, and clerks singing, and then his father's bedman, and then two heralds, and then a standard with a dragon, and then a great number of his servants in black, and then another standard with a white greyhound, and then after a great number of his officers, and after then came more heralds, and then a standard with the head officers of his house, and then heralds, Nerei bore the helmet and crest on horseback, and then his great banner of arms, embroidered with the diverse other banners, and then came riding master Clarenshu with his target, and his garter, and his sword, generously and rich, and after garter with his coat armour embroidered, and then more heralds of arms, and then came the chariot with great horses tapered in velvet to the ground, and every horse having a man on his back in black, and every one bearing a banner, roll of diverse king's arms, and then the chariot covered with gold cloth, and on the chariot lay a picture, lying richly with crown of gold, and great collar and his sceptre in his hand, lying in his robes and the garter about his leg, and a coat in embroidery of gold. About the corpse were borne for banners, a banner of the order, another of the red rose, another of the Queen Jane, another of the Queen's mother. After him went a goodly horse, covered with cloth of gold unto the ground, and the master of the horse, with a man of arms in armour, which was offered, but the man and the horse. There was set up a goodly hearse in Westminster Abbey, with banner rolls, and hung with velvet about. He was interred in the Lady Chapel, close by where his grandparents would be buried, inside the heart of the beautiful and ornate part of Westminster Abbey. It's possible that, at this point, this would have been the place where the future kings and queens were buried, but Edward's father, Henry VIII, was actually interred in Windsor Castle, a distance from the centre of London, in a vault alongside his third wife, Jane Seymour. Edward was buried close to Henry VII and Elizabeth of York, his grandparents, and he would be the second Tudor monarch interred inside of Westminster Abbey. However, around 300 years after his burial, he was disturbed and his remains were moved as the vault containing the boy Tudor king's remains were opened. Dean Arthur Stanley had obtained permission from Queen Victoria to conduct a thorough search of Westminster Abbey as he was looking for the remains of the kings and queens and conducting a register of where they were buried. In particular, he was looking for the remains of King James I, the first Stuart monarch that reigned after Elizabeth I, the final Tudor monarch and half-sister of Edward VI. He would spend much of his time searching for James, and he found his coffin next to that of Henry VII and Elizabeth of York, and the first Tudor monarch's coffins had been stripped of their wood to make way for James and only their lead inner coffins remained. However, before Dean Stanley found this, he searched the tomb of Edward VI in an area directly west of Henry VII and Elizabeth of York's monument. They dug down and searched, and they came across a shallow vault containing one lead coffin. It was described as looking as rent and deformed, as well as wasted by long corrosion, and perhaps by having been examined before. What Dean Stanley meant by this is that the lead coffin of Edward VI was badly corroded and was also damaged. He also speculated it may have been broken into before by someone who was looking for something, leading to the conclusion as to whether there was a grave robber inside of the abbey, and this wasn't investigated. The narrow vault Stanley broke into was right at the heart of the Lady Chapel, showing that this coffin inside belonged to someone incredibly important. He looked inside the vault and saw the coffin was seven and a half foot long and two and a half foot wide, and that it was the only coffin inside. Inside the vault was also something incredible. The remains of the lost Torinino altar, which was once placed in front of the west end of the Henry VII and Elizabeth of York memorial with their effigies on. This altar was considered priceless at the time, and parts of it were found inside of the vault of Edward VI, to protect it from the hands of rebels during the English Civil War. However, what was curious about Edward VI's vault was that someone had definitely been in it before Stanley broke in during the 19th century. There was some other debris there, and someone had been in and in part cleared away the wooden case of Edward VI's coffin. Also, 
the lower end of the vault where the original coffin plate was loose and was not fastened to anything, and it had been curled up. Once it was cleaned, the coffin plate read, Edward VI, by grace of God of England, France and Ireland, defender of the faith, and on earth under Christ supreme, head of the Church of England and Ireland. And he migrated from this life on the 6th day of July, in the evening at 8th hour of the year of our Lord, 1553, and in the 7th year of his reign, and the 16th year of his age. But with this, someone had been inside the vault, and had moved away the wooden outer shell of his coffin, and also unfastened the memorial inscription to the Tudor boy king. Edward VI is sometimes considered a forgotten Tudor monarch, as despite his reign causing a huge amount of chaos and turbulence with religion, it was a reign that was short-lived, and Edward's influence was rather minor, as his power was dominated by the Regency Council established for him, and this itself was dominated by Edward Seymour and John Dudley, the Duke of Northumberland. His insignificance in the eyes of many throughout the centuries is alluded to the fact his burial place was left unmarked up until 1966, where an inscribed stone was laid in the chapel floor to commemorate Edward VI. It reads, In memory of Edward VI, buried in this chapel, this stone was placed here by Christ's Hospital in thanksgiving for their founder, 7th of October 1966. But Edward VI was the great hope for the Tudor dynasty, but at the age of just 15, the Tudor torchbearer would succumb to a brutal and horrific illness, and with this, the heir of Henry VIII's life would be tragically cut short. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.